What's up everybody? Moving on to the next example, the function f of x equals ax plus b over x plus 3 times x minus 2 has a horizontal tangent at the coordinate 1 and 2 and we have to find the constants a and b. So notice how there are two unknowns that we have to find, two constants, so that means we need two equations. Well, because we know that this coordinate 1 and 2 is going to be on this function, then one of the equations we can make is f of 1 equals 2. Add an x value of 1, a y value of 2 occurs on this function. Now we're also told that this function has a horizontal tangent at this coordinate, and a horizontal tangent always occurs at either a maximum or a minimum value. So we know that a horizontal tangent means that its slope is going to be zero. The slope of a horizontal line is always zero. And we also know that the derivative of a function gives us the slope of the tangent at a specific x value. So at this x value of 1, the derivative is going to equal 0 because the slope of that horizontal tangent is 0. So the second equation that we can make is that f of prime 1, the value of the derivative at that x value of 1, is equal to 0. So let's work with that first equation, f of 1 equals 2. Well, all we have to do is we have to plug in that x value of 1 into the original equation, into the original function. So doing that, we'd have a times 1 plus b all over that first bracket. If we plug in 1 for the x, we would get 4 here. And if we plug in 1 for the second bracket, we would get negative 1 here. And then that's all equal to 2. Now this 2 is like over 1, so if we cross multiply everything, we would get a plus b equaling negative 8. So that is our first equation that we will use when we're finding the constants a and b. Now the second equation that we have to work with is this f of prime 1 is equal to 0. And this one's going to be tougher to work with because we have to first find the derivative of this function with these constants a and b in it. So it's going to be a bit of a headache. But uh, notice how this function is a rational function, one function over another. So we're going to use the quotient rule when we find the derivative. But before we do that, I would suggest that you take the original function f of x and expand that denominator. So the numerator would stay as ax plus b. And then if we take x plus 3 times x minus 2, foil it out, expand it, simplify it, we would get x squared plus x minus 6. And now we have this function here, and now let's apply the quotient rule on it to get the derivative. So then doing the quotient rule, we would take the derivative of the top function, which is just a, right, because there's like this x to the power of 1 here. So the derivative of x is just 1, and then we're left with that constant a in front, times the bottom function, x squared plus x minus 6, minus the top function, ax plus b, times the derivative of the bottom function, which is just 2x plus 1, and then this is going to be all over x squared plus x minus 6 squared, that bottom function squared. So there's going to be a lot of algebra in this step, so we have to distribute that a inside the bracket. We would end up with ax squared plus ax minus 6a, and then we have to foil these two brackets first before distributing that negative in. So when we expand those brackets out, we would end up with 2ax squared plus ax plus 2bx plus b, and now we have to distribute that negative inside the bracket. So when we do that, when we simplify everything, notice how the ax's will cancel out, and we would just be left with negative ax squared minus 6a minus 2bx minus b when we simplify all the like terms in the numerator. And then that's still going to be all over x squared plus 6x minus 6 squared. So this in blue here represents the derivative of this function with those constants a and b. And now that we have the general derivative here in terms of x, we can go back to this second equation that we're working with, f of prime 1 is equal to 0, and get a simplified expression. So we would plug in 1 for all the x's in the derivative, so I did that up here. So notice how for any x value, I plugged in 1, and then that's all going to equal 0. So when you simplify all that in the numerator, you collect the like terms, you would end up with negative 7a minus 3b all over 16 in the denominator, and that all equals 0. 
And now if we cross multiply here to simplify this even more, we would end up with negative 7a minus 3b equaling 0 or negative 7a equals 3b if we bring the negative 3b over. So this here represents our second equation that we can work with. So now we have two equations. This one, this is our second equation, and then this one here is our first equation. So we have two equations, this a plus b equals negative 8 and negative 7a equals 3b. Two equations, two unknowns, and now we can solve for a or b using substitution or elimination. So then writing those two equations here, I erased all the previous work just to give myself more room and just so you can see clearly how we're going to solve these. So let's take equation one and let's isolate for b. So we're going to use substitution. So b is equal to negative a and then we bring the a over minus a. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take this b here and sub it in for that b. So we'll have negative 7a equals 3 bracket this new expression for b negative 8 minus a. And then when we simplify this we'll have negative 7a uh, 3 times negative 8 is negative 24, 3 times negative a is negative 3a. And then solving for a, we would bring the negative 3a over, negative 7a plus 3a, that gives us negative 4a. And this is negative 24, so then dividing both sides by negative 4, we get an a value of 6. So a is equal to 6, and then we can just sub in that a value here to get the b value. So the b value would be negative 8 minus that a value of 6, so b would be negative 14. So those two constants, a is equal to 6, b is equal to negative 14, those are our final answers. So our final function would be f of x equals 6x minus 14 all over x plus 3 times x minus 2. And you can always check your answer by going back to the original equations that you made and making sure they hold. So f of 1 has to equal to, so if we plug in 1 for all the x's here, you would get a y value of 2, so the first equation holds. And then if you want to check this second equation, you have to find the derivative of this. So we're not going to do it in this video. I would suggest you do it though, just for extra practice. So you would want to expand that denominator and then find the derivative using the quotient rule. And then when you get a simplified derivative, when you plug in 1 for the x values in that simplified derivative, you should get a derivative value of 0. So then you'll see that both of these equations hold, so we can be pretty confident that the constants that we got are correct. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.